the Rose City of Petra as a wonderland of an ancient civilization. It's UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the seven wonders of the world. It is approached through the adjacent town of Wadi Musa, which is the accommodation and transport hub, and where we stayed for three nights at Sunset Hotel. The archaeological site is massive, that stretches over 60 square kilometers, and we spent two full days exploring the ancient city. The first day we started from the main entrance heading to the Sea Canyon, which leads to the treasury. It's around two and a half kilometers from the entrance to the site to the basin by Dusty Road, starting with the caves and the structures carved into the rocks. Obelisk is the most famous one, built as a funerary symbol by the Nabataeans in the 1st century BC. We continued for about 15 minutes until we reached the famous Sikh. Sikh Canyon is a mesmerizing narrow gorge that serves as a dramatic entrance to the ancient Nabataean city. Stretching for about 1.2 kilometers, the Sikh is flanked by towering and stone cliffs that rise up to 80 meters high. Previously, you could take a horse and a carriage from the visitor center to the treasury, but these have now been replaced with electric or buggy style carts. A ride in the cart cost 25 dinar, and it cuts out around 30 minutes walk. There are also camels, donkeys and horses around the site, but we don't recommend using them as there are concerns about animal welfare. The city of Petra was established as a trading post by the Nabataeans, an Arab Bedouin tribe indigenous to the region what is now Jordan. The Nabataeans living and trading in Petra soon accumulated a significant amount of wealth and an envious Greek empire attacked the city in 312 BC. This event marks the first reference to Petra in the recorded history. The Nabataeans successfully fought back the Greek invaders by taking advantage of the mountainous terrain surrounding the city. The mountains effectively served as a natural wall buttressing Petra. The Romans invaded Petra in 106 AD and ultimately forced the Nabataeans to surrender. The Roman Empire annexed the new Ligan territory and changed its name to Arabia. They continued to rule over the city for more than 250 years, until the middle of the 4th century AD, when an earthquake destroyed many of its buildings. The Byzantines eventually took control of the region and governed Petra for some 300 years. Petra flourished in the 1st century AD, when its population peaked at an estimated 20,000 inhabitants. Nabataeans, a community of master builders, whose skills included hydraulic engineering, iron production and copper refining, commanded the trade routes from Damascus to Arabia, profiting by taxes paid on the caravans that passed through the Nabataean territory. Nabataeans had the ability to control the water supply that led to the rise of the desert city, creating an artificial oasis. The area is visited by flash floods, but the Nabataeans controlled them by the use of dams, cisterns and water conduits. This innovation stored water for a prolonged period of drought and enabled the city to prosper from its sale. At the end of the narrow gorge stands Petra's most elaborate ruin, popularly known as al Kazne, hewn into the sandstone cliff. al Kazne means the treasury in Arabic, a name derived from the legends regarding the decorative stone urn high on the second level, which is in reality solid sandstone. It came to be called al Kazne in the early 19th century by the area's Bedouins, as they had believed it contains treasures. It's marked by the hundreds of bullet 
holes made by the local Bedouin tribes that hope to dislodge riches to be hidden within it. Al Hazna is 24 meters wide and 37 meters tall and is thought it was built as a mausoleum. From the treasury, the passage protons into what is commonly referred to as the outer seek. Riddling the walls of the outer seek are more than 40 tombs and houses, built by the Nabatians in the crow step, still reminiscent of Assyrian architecture. Colloquially known as the Street of Facades, they are easily accessible unlike many tombs in Petra. A little further at the foot of the mountain is a massive theatre positioned so as to bring the greatest number of tombs within view. If you are feeling tired and need to chill with a glass of freshly squeezed juice, tea or ice cream, there are some traditional Bedouin cafes along the way. Almost opposite the theatre you will notice another set of steps that lead to a fine set of royal tomb facades cut into the cliffs above. They are a cluster of grandiose funerary monuments that reflect the wealth and architectural prowess of the Nabatean civilization. Constructed between the 1st century BC and the 2nd century AD, these tombs were designed to house the remains of Petra's elite. The theater was cut into the hillside and into several of the tombs and could accommodate around 8,500 spectators reflecting Petra's significance as a thriving cultural hub. The performances that audiences were able to attend here were poetry readings, dramas, as well as gladiator fights. The Antum and Petra is one of the most striking and well-preserved royal tombs, renowned for its grand architectural design and historical significance. Constructed in the 1st century AD, and later repurposed as a Byzantine church in the 5th century. It's named after a large urn that adorns the top of its facade. The tomb is carved into the cliff face and features an imposing colonnade terrace, a large central chamber and a series of smaller rooms that once served various ceremonial purposes. Its elevated position provides a commanding view of the Petra Valley, enhancing its majestic presence.